All right. So my opponent's overall claim was that RFID chips are harmful to society. He supported this by saying that they are harmful to health, they take away our freedom and privacy, and RFID chips are unsustainable because they can easily be hacked or infected with viruses. My counterclaims to this are that RFID chips have no effect on health, there is little risk that data can be stolen, and RFID chips are not a security concern. First of all, I'm going to look at the evidence for his health claims. Um, the article that he cited that said that RFID chips are installed in tattoo parlors does not take a position on whether or not this is a good or a bad thing. Um, and in his reasoning, he is making the assumption that tattoo shops are dirty and that they are unhygienic and there's a risk of infection, when really he had no evidence to support this claim. In fact, if you think about it, uh, tattoo shops are trusted to give you piercings and give you tattoos with sterilized needles, and it's not really a problem. And my counterclaim is supported that my counterclaim that RFID chips are have no effect on health is supported by the fact that in 2004 the FDA approved RFID chips for humans, and an article by USC Today points out that pets have been microchipped for years with no problems. For his second point, that there is a risk of taking away our freedom and privacy, um, the article that he cited here said that the RFID chips can store information such as personal data, health data, stuff like that. Well, the issue with that is hard drives and other personal computers can also store this data, and it's not necessarily a problem if you use it properly and you're careful with what you put on there and you use passwords and whatnot. So, the RFID chips are really just storage devices, like any other, and they shouldn't be treated differently as a harmful thing. Um, so that is also a flaw with his reasoning here. And my counterclaim that they take away our freedom and privacy is supported by actually a quote from one of the articles that he cited that said, that the risk of cloning is very low as long as the user of the chip stays at least a foot away from unsecured persons or objects. Um, now on to the third point that uh, the RFID chips are unsustainable because they could easily be hacked. Um, I was looking at the article here that he was citing and the author actually had a background in law which I kind of don't see why he should be writing anything about the, this new technology. The, his bio didn't indicate that he had any technological degree or experience or anything. And then looking at the reasoning, uh, I, uh, from, that, from one of the articles that he actually cited, it said, it was an InfoSec article, it said that the chances of getting hacked are actually lower than other devices because of the shorter range of the RFID chips, whereas computers and cell phones are connected to networks which provide more opportunity for hackers to hack them. Um, so that is my counterclaim that RFID chips are not a security concern. And because of my, th so in summary, my three claims are that the RFID chips present no effect on health, there is little risk that data can be stolen, and RFID chips are not a security concern. Well, the structural stuff's pretty clear at the beginning. The health claim is disputed. Uh, you know, based on the notion that the, you know, the places that these things would be put in uh, are perhaps unsanitary. That's your argument about what their argument was. And I guess that's probably my memory of it as well, that there's some assumption that there's a lack of sanitary conditions in the places where this would be happening. Of course, I don't know that it's going to be limited to the tattoo parlor. Uh, I think that you could also make that other argument that suggests that people might be obtaining these in a variety of other places and locations as well. Uh, the approval by the FDA, for instance, I think does seem to show that there isn't any perceived risk 
uh, at the moment and that it's been approved for you know, whatever it is, 15 years now, uh, that seems like it's a pretty substantial amount of time that we would have seen some additional risk. And the, you know, I think uh, you could maybe make a legitimate challenge here that the advocate within 15 years should be able to point to some incidences or examples where there was a problem and the absence of those things seems to suggest that we don't really have anything that, that, there's, that there is to worry about. On the second point, on the privacy issue, I think I appreciated the analogy that you drew that it's simply a storage device and the only thing that's different about it is where it happens to be located. Uh, and the ar argument uh, that you also make later on suggests that it's uh, you know, less likely to be hacked than other storage devices because it's not really connected to any networking, uh, which I think is, you know, so the second and the third points kind of run together a little bit on this issue, and the hacking thing, I think, is connected to the privacy issue as well. Um, you know, the I think it's a pretty solid analogy that you're drawing there, and when you're talking about uh, risk of loss of information or access to that information, the notion that these other devices uh, are likely to be using networks and the RFI or RDF, RFIDs are not likely to be connected in the same way. I think that's a good point. There was a piece of evidence that referred to, you know, the risk of cloning being relatively low as long as you stay at least a foot away from somebody. Um, you know, that was a little abstract, but I guess that that was one of those things that uh, became, became an issue in the advocate's argument, and you bothered to find an answer to that point. Uh, that's fine. All right. Thank you.